So I want to officially welcome everyone here to worship and um, especially those who might be visiting with us um, later watching on YouTube and know that um, our church is always welcome to new folks. And if you have any questions about the church, you can contact us um, and we would be glad to, to see how we can meet your needs. Um, I want to say today, um, we're going, I'm going to be um, doing more of the, the controls on, uh, with the settings. So it might look a little different. And um, Laura is the one who's usually doing this. Um, but I, last minute, I decided to try something different. Um, so I'm, I get to, to try and be the one who's juggling some of the, some of the things. And I'm, I'm doing this in hopes that we might be able to improve the audio quality of what you hear from, from the, the, the pre-recorded music that we, that we use. And Zoom is, Zoom is great for a lot, of, a lot of things, but it's not that great for recorded music. So we're, we're trying some, um, some different things to see if it makes a difference. So, so bear, bear with me. Because now I'm in the practicing that I've been doing, I've realized how much Laura has been doing. <laughs> um, so um, we're going to start our worship with our prelude. And now Frankie is going to lead us in our call to worship and our invocation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And God saw that it was good. At the beginning of his ministry, Jesus was baptized by John. The heavens opened and the spirit descended like a dove. Then God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. God of heaven and earth, let us pray. God of heaven and earth, we gather in the name of Jesus to hear your holy word and to be immersed in your spirit. Speak to us with grace and truth and pour out your love upon us so that this temple may resound with joyful shouts of glory. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, God with us, Emmanuel, the one who taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. All 
our opening hymn is Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Let us pray prayer now to confess our sins. With our prayer of confession. Let us pray together. Merciful God, in the waters of baptism, you promised forgiveness and new life, making us part of the body of Christ. You name and claim us as your beloved children, yet we confess that we remain preoccupied with ourselves, separated from one another. We cling to destructive habits. We hold grudges and show reluctance to welcome one another. We allow the past to hold us captive and we forget to whom we belong. Lord, in your loving kindness, have mercy on us and free us from sin. Help us to better claim our belovedness so that we may rise to new life and live together in grace. Hear now the silent prayers of our hearts. Friends, hear the good news of the gospel. As a voice from heaven said to Jesus, so God says to each of us, you are my beloved child, and with you I am well pleased. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. We'll hear our anthem now. Wade in the water.
We're going to listen now to our scripture lesson, um, which is going to be from Luke's gospel. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Lord, as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us so that by hearing what you have to say to us today, we might be inspired to go and live and show your love in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A reading from Luke chapter 3. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, a Lysanias ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Ananias and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. John went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, saying, You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today is the Sunday that is called the Baptism of the Lord's Sunday. Um, it's the Sunday that we remember and celebrate the baptism of Jesus. While everyone can remember um, the day that we celebrate his birthday, Christmas Day, December 25th, I doubt many of you have been counting down the, the days for today's date, the Baptism of the Lord. But the baptism of the Lord Sunday is an important day, um, and it's always the Sunday after Epiphany. And if you um, have been following the, the church calendar, 
you know that epiphany was this, this past Wednesday. The word epiphany means to make something manifest, to make something known. And in the baptism of Jesus, we have the opportunity to witness an epiphany firsthand. In today's lesson, Jesus' identity is revealed as he is baptized. The heavens are open, the Holy Spirit descends on Jesus like a dove, and a voice declares to him, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. So this morning, I invite you to consider with me the significance of this event in Jesus's life. For I believe in this story is the key not only to understanding better who Jesus is, but also, under, but also to understand who we are as baptized followers of Christ. For the last several Sundays, we've been working through the early chapters of Luke's gospel. If you remember the story of John the Baptist being born to Elizabeth and Zechariah, and Jesus' birth to Mary and Joseph out in the manger. And for the next several weeks, we'll be following this, this story of Jesus in Luke's gospel, both in worship and in our Wednesday Bible studies. From Luke chapter 2, when Jesus was born, um, we fast forward almost 20 years uh, to today's passage. It's the adult John out in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism for the repentance of sins. To be honest with you, Jesus' baptism in Luke's gospel is a little underwhelming. It is simply mentioned almost as an aside when it says, when Jesus also has been baptized, and it just follows the phrase, when all the people were baptized. No mention of who actually does the baptism is made either. Perhaps Luke was trying to downplay John's role in the baptism, making it clear to everyone who the main characters are in this drama. It's Jesus and God. The heavens open, the Holy Spirit descends upon Jesus like a dove, and God's voice declares to Jesus, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. For Luke, the emphasis really is not in the act of baptism done in the waters of the Jordan, but it's in the anointing that comes as the heavens open. The dove descends and the voice confirms Jesus in his identity as God's beloved. Reflecting on the meaning of baptism, Lutheran pastor and theologian David Lose makes the claim that baptism is primarily about identity. And in fact, the testimony concerning Jesus' identity has been front and center in Luke's gospel from the very beginning. If you remember, the angel announces to Mary that her offspring will be called Son of the Most High. And Elizabeth tells Mary how blessed, blessed she is to be carrying the Son of God. Zechariah and Simeon and Anna and even John in the womb all give testimony that Jesus is God's son, conceived not by Joseph, but of the Holy Spirit. Even young Jesus has a growing understanding of this as he spends day in the temple being about his father's business. So I believe that what happens at Jesus' baptism is not that he is somehow granted a new status as God's beloved child. Rather, what happens is that his identity is being confirmed by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit literally anoints him as God's representative, as the Messiah who will do God's work. Before he begins his ministry in the next chapter, Jesus is confirmed in his identity by the voice of God, a voice that declares what has been true since his conception. You are my son, the beloved. Now, in these opening chapters of Luke, we see that God is the one who has taken the initiative. God is the one who is active decisively in human history, bringing salvation to all people through the coming of Jesus. And just as John faced opposition from Herod, landing in jail and eventually losing his life, so too will Jesus face op opposition. As we will see next week, Right after his baptism, 
Jesus is tempted by the devil in the wilderness, and he soon begins his ministry in his hometown of Nazareth, where he faces opposition. Today's lesson, I think, not only helps us to understand Jesus' baptism and identity, but it can also help us to understand our baptism and our identity. I believe the gospel is the good news that we are loved and cherished and valued eternally by God, not on the basis of our merit or worth, but simply because of God's gracious love towards us. Just checking, I thought my internet had come down. Though God's grace and our response are never tied to the moment of baptism, when we come to the font, we, what we claim that the Holy Spirit is truly present. Through the eyes and ears of faith, we believe that the heavens are opened up, and there's a voice telling us, you are God's beloved, in you I am well pleased. Just as the baptism of Jesus establishes his identity, so does our baptism establish our identity. In his little book called The Life of the Beloved, Henry Nouwen explores what it means for us to be called God's beloved children. For Nouwen, it's not enough for us to simply say we are God's beloved, Though this identity is given to us in baptism, we must continue along the, our spiritual journeys of actually learning how to become the beloved. In his words, becoming God's beloved means letting the truth of our belovedness become enfleshed in everything we think, say, or do. As you can imagine, this is easier said than done. There are voices from within and from without telling us that we are anything but beloved, that we are not valued much in God's eyes or anyone's eyes. Now one describes the world as a place that often judges our values and self-worth on the basis of success, popularity, or wealth. Even those who are closest to us may value us only on the basis of what we do or do not do for them. Our God-given identity as beloved children can be damaged when we listen to voices of rejection and self-doubt. When we fail to listen to God's voice saying to us, you are my beloved child in whom I am well pleased, we can see our weaknesses, our brokenness, our insecurities, our doubts, all of this can be seen as a confirmation that, that we really are not worthy of God's love. One thing that you may not know about me yet is about my love for movies. And I love when there are lessons in movies that teach us things about our spiritual lives. I want to tell you about a movie that I saw several years ago. It's the adult-oriented action movie named Hancock and Will Smith is the lead, and he plays a vigilante superhero named John Hancock, who is a superhero, um, but is, is a superhero who doesn't have his act together. His reckless actions routinely cost the city of Los Angeles millions and millions of dollars. The opening scene of the movie shows Hancock, the superhero, asleep on a park bench, there's a bottle of empty booze rolling on the ground nearby. And a kid walking by the bench finally wakes him up, pleading for him to get his act together and to capture the bad guys who are speeding away. Though Hancock manages to get the job done, his reckless behavior creates millions and millions of dollars in damage to the highway. The crowds often jeer at him, telling him, some superhero you are. We smell alcohol on your breath. We don't need you in this city. Hancock takes on many self-destructive behaviors and he internalizes the voices that are telling him that he is worthless. As a fallen superhero, Hancock has forgotten his true identity. 
but something in the movie begins to change Hancock. There's a man named Ray who is saved by Hancock from an oncoming train. And though the crowd begins to yell at Hancock for the mess he makes, Ray is moved to do one simple thing. Ray stops and he thanks Hancock. Eventually Ray befriends Hancock and through a long change, chain of events, helps him to reclaim his true identity. You have a calling, you are a hero, Ray tells Hancock. You're going to be miserable the rest of your life until you accept that truth. Part of Hancock's rehabilitation involves him putting on a superhero uniform. Hancock, this is a uniform, a uniform that represents a purpose. It represents a calling. Though Hancock resists the uniform at first, Ray finally succeeds in getting him to reclaim his identity as a superhero. I'm afraid in many ways, we live our lives like the fallen superhero named Hancock. We may not be out there trying to stop trains to save people, but we all have faced challenges in our lives. And we all at times fail to live from the truth of our identity that we are God's children, that we are named and claimed through the waters of baptism as God's beloved. We often fail prey to the world that often tries to define us according to much different standards. The world tells us, you are what you have, or you are what you do. Some of us believe the lie that we really are not as much worth as God says that somehow we don't make the grade. Though we may try and overcompensate and project an image that we are always on top of the world, deep down I think we all have the need to be accepted, that we all have the need to be loved. But the truth of the gospel is this, we belong to one who is not only the potter who has made us, but the redeemer who has loved us and the spirit who has named us and claimed us as beloved children. Through the waters of baptism, we can know that our identity is sealed by the Holy Spirit and that by God's grace, we can continue to become who we already are. But like Hancock, we are not able always to make it our own. We need others who can remind us of our true identity to help us reclaim the superhero hidden beneath the rough edges. Our job as a church family is to help God's love come alive in one another and in the world. Christian education is about the whole people of God taking seriously the promises made at baptism to raise and nurture the baptized in such a way that we will discover the truth of our identity that we belong to God, that we are God's beloved forever. So friends, as we begin this new year, may we remember the good news of our baptism. We belong to one who will always be there to claim us, one who knows us and calls us by name, beloved. Thanks be to God, amen. Let us prepare to affirm our faith together through the words of a brief statement of faith. Let us say together, in life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves 
and to love God and neighbor and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the church. The same spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through scripture, engages us through the word, the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the church. Let us join our hearts together in the prayers of the people. O God of grace, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have given us new life in the waters of baptism. Help us to remember our identity each day as we seek to live in the truth of our baptism and help us to remind one another of our identity as beloved children of God. Lord, hear now our prayers for each other. We pray for those whose lives are bound by fear. May they experience the freedom of courage. We pray for those this day who know pain and immobility only too well. May they be granted healing. We pray for those who live in silent, silent isolation. May they hear the voice of comfort and companionship. We pray for those who may be facing life-changing decisions. May they rest in the confidence of your spirit's presence within in them. We pray for those whose grief today is simply unbearable. May your strength be enough for them to move through yet one more day. Lord, we are especially mindful this morning of the unrest and violence that we have seen in our nation's capital this week. Teach us, Lord, as a nation to let go of hatred and violence in any form. In the midst of all the forces that seek to divide us, teach us to respect one another in all of our differences and help us to be instruments of your healing. Give us the courage to follow you in the way of truth and peace and love, the way of our Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, Lord, we are bold enough to pray for ourselves. Open us to your spirit in fresh ways. Grant this congregation your vision for your world and the work that you're calling us to do. Empower us to step out in courage as your people. And Lord, we lift up to you now in the silence, prayers that are lodged in our hearts that are perhaps too deep for words. We give you thanks, O oh God, for your love that comes to us in the waters of baptism and enlivens us to be your people this day and the days that lie, to, lie ahead. In Christ's name that we pray, amen. As we prepare for a few moments to think about ways that we can offer ourselves in ministry, I invite you to consider um, what God might be calling you to do um, to love and to serve in big and small ways. The earth belongs to God, our creator, and every good thing is a gift from the Lord. Let us glorify God through the gift of our lives.
let us give thanks to God. Oh, gracious God, we do give you thanks for every blessing and spiritual gift that you have poured out upon us. Let the gifts of our lives be a source of blessing in your world, all to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Our closing hymn is Be Thou My Vision. So if you have some time today, um, find someone in your family or a friend and talk to them about your memory of your baptism. I did that with our, our younger youth um, Wednesday for our Bible study and I asked them and most of them couldn't remember their baptism. Um, we all have different backgrounds and there's not one, one right way to, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Some of us do it when we're older, some younger. But the good news is that it's God's grace and love that claim, claims us. And it's a gift um, that, that can never, the gift of God's love that will never let us go. Receive now the benediction. Friends, as you go out into the world sharing the light and love of God, let us go um, giving glory to God in all that we say and in all that we do. And as God's beloved children, may the blessings of God rest upon us all, trusting that nothing, nothing can separate us from the one who is our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Amen. Thank you.
want to thank all of y'all for, for being here today and um, pray that you will have a good week and um, let's stay in touch. <laughs>